Today I'm excited to show you a tool called Flux Peelit. It lets you create consistent characters from just a single image, without the need for training a LoRa. All you have to do is upload an image of a face, and Flux Peelit will generate images that look like that person. You can even change the clothing, surroundings, and lighting in each image. To get started with Flux Peelit, you can use it on several platforms. One option is Replicate, which requires a GitHub account. So you have to go to github.com and sign up. Once you are done, open replicate.com and click on Get Started, and you can now log in with the GitHub account you created. After you're logged in, click the link in the description to access the Flux Peelit page. Although Replicate is a paid service, each run costs only about 1.6 cents, making it quite affordable. If you prefer a free option, you can try it on Hugging Face, without needing to log in or signing up, although you can only generate a few images per day if you don't log in. You may also download and install it on your computer from its GitHub repository, but you will need a high-end graphics card. In this tutorial, I will be using Hugging Face because it's a free and online option, perfect for testing things out before spending any money. The settings I will show you will also work on Replicate. You can find all the links to Flux Peelid in the video description. Let's talk about the strengths and weaknesses of Flux Peelid. Peelid works best for creating consistent characters when using custom-generated human images, people who don't actually exist. This is because Peelid interprets the reference image you provide rather than recreating an exact copy. As a result, there may be slight differences or subtle changes, especially when comparing the character's facial features from different angles. Take for example this celebrity figure. The facial features may not match 100% in every image. This is because we are only giving Pulit a single reference image, typically from a front profile, which makes it challenging to capture a 100% accurate likeness from all angles. For real people, like celebrities, it's best to train a LoRa model to get a closer match. However, if we are working with an AI-generated character, an exact likeness isn't as important. Small differences in appearance feel natural, because we don't have a real person to compare it to. Also, Pulid is not as effective with creating consistent products or animals. However, it can create impressive images in various styles, including Pixar, anime, and other art styles. My next video will dive deeper into this, showing how to create consistent characters in different art styles. Be sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss the video. Let's get started using Flux Peelit. First, we need to upload our reference image. In the Upload section, just click on this icon to select an image file from your computer and click Open to upload your image. Above the image box, you will see the Prompt section. Here, you can write a detailed description to guide Peelit in analyzing and transferring facial details from your image. A clear descriptive prompt will help improve the quality of the generated image. For this example, I will enter a prompt that describes the hair, clothing, and background. A woman with long, flowing hair, dressed in a chic Persian outfit, standing on a cobblestone street with the Eiffel Tower in the background. The lighting of the scene can be set at sunrise or sunset, though I simply mentioned warm natural light. This adds context and helps with image generation by describing the style, setting, and time of day. Next, I will open another instance of Flux Peelid in a new tab and upload the same image, but this time I will enter a different prompt. The prompt will focus on details like the camera, surroundings, and lighting, leaving out any mention of hair or clothing, to see how Peelid interprets a consistent character on its own. After that, I will run both prompts side by side to compare the results. Before we get started, let's scroll down and go over some important settings. Most options can stay at their default values, but adjusting a few can give you more control over the output. For the image dimensions, you can set the width and height to customize the size of the output image. And the seed number option allows you to set a specific seed to influence how the images are generated. I will use minus one for a random seed number. Further down, click the arrow to open a drop down menu where you will find the negative prompt box. Here you can list elements you don't want to see in the final image. So I will enter this negative prompt. There is a very crucial parameter 
that needs to be set carefully. The time step to start inserting ID controls how closely the generated image resembles the original. You can scroll up to see the description where the recommended range is from 0 to 4. However, I will show you a visual example to help you understand it better. As you can see, setting the value to 0 will have the highest fidelity, making the image look identical to the original. And as this number is increased, the image will still resemble the original, but details like hair will begin to change. This gives you more flexibility for creativity and editability. I am going to stick with the default value of 0, but you may experiment with it if you like. And we are good to go. I didn't make any other changes. The guidance scale and CFG scale are set to their default values. Once everything is in order, click the Generate button, and it will start generating a new image for you. I will then switch to the other tab. Quickly review the settings, and then hit the Generate button to begin the process. The output image looks good. Her likeness and hair are well preserved, with only minor, unimportant differences. In this version, she's sitting in a park with a blurred background, just as described in the prompt. Her hair and dress also came out beautifully, even though I didn't specify them. The other image I generated is also stunning, thanks to Flux's strong prompt adherence and high image quality. I then tested some more prompts to further demonstrate Flux's capabilities. For example, this prompt has multiple elements. She is standing on a snow-covered mountain wearing a white jacket, with a cat on her shoulder, and she is also holding a sign that says Hello Flux. You can also create your LinkedIn profile photo with this prompt. Or you may also turn your image into a guitarist, performing on a stage. If you want to create detailed images with specific outfit or item descriptions, Flux handles it exceptionally well. If you like an image's composition, you can copy its seed number, paste it into the seed field, and make slight adjustments to the prompt, like changing the dress or hair color. This keeps the same composition, pose, and background while updating specific details. Using seed is an ideal way for maintaining a consistent layout or style across variations. This is a very powerful approach, as you can start with one image and generate variations. This helps build a comprehensive dataset for training models like LoRa. After training a LoRa model, you can use open source tools like Forge or ComfyUI to generate unlimited images in various poses and expressions. So that's it for this tutorial. Now it's your turn to experiment. Generating multiple variations with different clothing or lighting is easy. No special software or LoRa model needed, just one website. Share your thoughts on Pulit in the comments below, and stay tuned for more tutorials. Thank you for watching.